In this video I share with you 5 rules for 3D printing gears. Following those you will get always perfect 3D printed model that is actually usable in mechanical applications. I keep it straight and not going to waste your time with over scientific theories or with useless statistics. So here are 5 rules that guarantee success for functional prints. Rule number 1, probably the most simple one in this list, but it is important. Use raft when printing gears. Raft is not for better build addition, but instead it eliminates a thing called elephant foot. If you print your gears straight on the build plate, the bottom layer will be wider, which means your print is not accurate. If this happens, the gear will not mesh together correctly and they will be useless for any applications. This also applies for resin prints. There is only one exception when I don't use raft while printing gears. This is when I use printer with extremely good pad leveling and I can trust them fully. I am not paid to say this, but only Bambula printers are at this level, from my experience. If I use any other printer than Bambulab, I will use raft for printing gears. Rule number two, strength. It's important that gears you print will actually survive when it's going to be used. In Slicer there are four settings that I wanna highlight to make your gear strong. First is infill. I wanna highlight this because it's not that important. The strength from the gears is not coming from the infill. There is no difference will you use 10% or 40%. That's why I recommend to keep this around 25%. Just leave it there. Exception is when you use 100% infill then it will make a difference. But in most cases it's not needed. Second setting that is important is the amount of valve parameters. What is perfect number? Well there is none, but it's easy to understand how much walls you need. I think the perfect amount is to fill the gear tubes fully, with the material plus one extra layer. This is strong enough, but you don't waste unnecessary amount of filament. Next, third and fourth setting. I put them together because they are really similar. Bottom and top layer count. If you keep those numbers low, you don't get a strong gear. Trust me, I know. So what is the perfect number? Again, there is none, but I usually use somewhere between 5 to 7 layers. In most cases you can use the same number here that you used from the previous setting. For example if you print outer walls 5 layer thick then I would also print pot and top surface 5 layers thick. Have worked for me every single time. Rule number 3. Choose the right material. I'm not going through with every single material, instead I straight give you two materials that are best for printing gears. PLA and nylon. By nylon I mean all the filaments that have PA in the name. PLA is pretty good rigid material and you can print functional gears with it, but it has some limitations. It doesn't handle heat at all, so if gears will spin at really high speed, which create a lot of friction, which creates heat, the PLA gear just start melting. It's also important to make sure PLA gears are well lubricated. But also if the device has PLA gears in it and goes outside at a sunny summer day, it will be a problem also. Then it's best to avoid PLA and use nylon instead. I recommend using nylon when the gears have to do some heavy work like spinning long at high RPM or experience huge amount of loads and PLA is just not strong enough. In this list I actually wanna add resin. You most definitely can resin print functional gears, but again what type of resin? Well don't even try to use basic resin. With what you can print nice cute things, minimum use ABS like resin. But even this is not the best option. Best resins for gears comes with a high price. Like Hay Gears extra strong or extra friction resistant resin or Formlabs crazy engineering resins. Rule number 4. Not all gears are 3D printable. Most of them are, but there is especially one type of gear you wanna avoid printing. This is warm gear. Warm gear dudes are basically treads and the treads are a pain to 3D print. First of all, you just don't get good result printing this type of model and even if you do, it's not success yet. The worm gear has insane amount of gear ratio, which means the dudes have to handle really heavy loads and because of the printing direction, the dudes just are not strong enough to handle it. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's smarter to avoid it. Also gears that have shaft designed into it. Again, you can print those and use them in toys or something, but if you plan to transfer serious loads, 3D printed shafts are trash. Instead, design a gear where you can attach the metal shaft to it. But what if you need a warm gear? Well in this case, PCBWay can help you out. PCBWay offers multiple manufacturing services, including 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication and even injection molding. So if you need a warm gear, 
it's easier and cheaper to just order one that is CNC'd, printed with metal or printed with some crazy engineering resin. I have used PCBWay service a lot and the best part is it's so simple to use. Select the preferred manufacturing technique, upload your 3D model, select the material and PCBWay will do the rest. Simple, effective and fast. So if you need something but you don't have right machines, skills or tools, PCBWay is your one stop solution. Rule number 5. The last important rule in this video is to understand the weak spot. By this I mean understanding weak spots in your projects and in your gears. Really often the gears itself are not the weak spots. Most of the time the weak spots are the things that hold the gears in place or the spots where the gears are connected to the shaft. But speaking about the gear weak spots, if the gear fail, 95% of the time it fails over here, pretty close around the shaft. This is because in this spot the least amount of material is transferring the load from the shaft to the dudes or other way around. I can show you, I set up a quick test. I simulate what happens to the gear if it experiences the load that it cannot overcome. Boom, exactly as expected. If you follow rule number 2, especially the top and bottom surface part, this should make it good enough, but sometimes it needs more. One solution is to go for 100% infill. This would work for sure, but there is a better way. If you cut some material away from the gear, just like this, then you create a strong walls from the center of the gear to the outer layers. This actually adds more material to the gears exactly where it's needed. I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you have more important notes to make every print successful, feel free to leave a note in the comments. But for now, thank you for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.